Hello friends, welcome back. This is part one of the chapter Life Process from Biology. In this chapter, let us learn the meaning of life process. Let us see what nutrition is and let us learn how nutrition happens in unicellular organisms, plants and human beings. Let's watch. Life processes. Let us look at the overview of the chapter life processes. Let us learn what are life processes followed by nutrition, then comes respiration, transportation and excretion. How do we decide whether something is alive? The most important criteria to decide whether something is alive is movement. Movement is the basic criteria to decide if something is alive, which means if something is moving, it has life, especially in living organisms. Some movements are easily visible, like the movements of body parts. Some movements are not easily visible, like the molecular movements, which happens in cells. What do you mean by life processes? All living organisms need food to grow and survive. The maintenance of a living organism is a continuous process and has to go on even when an organism is at rest. The basic life processes are nutrition, respiration, transportation and excretion. It's a continuous process. First take a look at nutrition. Most of the activities that we do every day like walking, running, reading, lifting objects etc. need energy. And what is the source of energy? The source of energy is the food we eat. We consume food and that becomes our source of energy. Well then how do organisms get their food? Do all organisms get the food in the same way as the question we will answer. All organisms need energy but they acquire this in different ways. What are those different ways? Let's learn. In modes of nutrition. Modes of nutrition are of two types. One of them is autotrophic, another one is heterotrophic. So what are autotrophs? Autotrophs are any organism that are capable of producing their own food using light, energy, water and carbon dioxide. Example, green plants, bacteria, algae, phytoplanktons, etc. So they are the organisms which can produce their own food. Carbon and energy requirements of the autotropic organisms are fulfilled by photosynthesis. So all the green plants that we see, they get their food by the process called as photosynthesis. We have studied this in earlier classes also. Let us look at this once again. So what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is the process by which plants prepare their food by using carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. The food is prepared by carbohydrate which is stored in the form of starch. Oxygen is released in this process. So there is this equation of photosynthesis. 6 CO2 plus 12 H2O gives rise to C6 H2O6 plus 6 H2O plus 6 O2 in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll is formed. Dear students, we have we know about photosynthesis. Uh, it's a process by which the green plants prepare their own food. Have a look at this equation. You will have to write it down and remember it. Keep practicing this equation. So let's see how is this process of photosynthesis taking place. Photosynthesis takes place in three main steps. First one. Absorption of light energy by chlorophyll. Conversion of light energy into chemical energy and splitting up of water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. The water molecules are split into hydrogen and oxygen. And the third one is reduction of carbon dioxide by hydrogen to form carbohydrates. Well then what's chlorophyll? These are the green pigments present in leaves. If we observe the cross section of a leaf under a microscope, 
we can see cells containing green dot like structures called chloroplast which contain the chlorophyll that's a diagram of chlorophyll dear students please take a note of this let's have a look at stomata stomata are tiny pores present in the leaves through which exchange of gases takes place each stoma has a pair of guard cells which controls the opening and closing of the stomatal pore when water enters the guard cells it swells and the pore opens and when the guard cells lose water it shrinks and the pore closes if you look at the figure this the one on your left hand side is that of a leaf and when you zoom it and look into a microscope you can see the stomata and the stomatal opening inside a leaf this is another picture and this picture on your left side will show guard cells which are swollen and you can see the arrow marks of h2o over there they are blue in color and there is water around and the stomata has opened up and in the next picture which is towards your right side you can see guard cell which is shrunken because there is less water and the stomata is closed so let's take a uh, look at another type of nutrition which is heterotrophic nutrition there's a lot of variation in the way organisms obtain their food the way the food is processed is also different amoeba takes in food using temporary finger like extensions of the cell surface which fuse over the food particle forming a food vacuole inside the food vacuole complex substances are broken down into simpler ones which then diffuses into cytoplasm have a look at this uh, picture you can see process of nutrition in amoeba in the picture a you can see that the food particle is outside here and slowly as you keep on looking from this as we move to picture b the food particle is almost taken inside and you can see the layer with the food which was outside has now slowly come inside and by the time we move up to d we can see that a fresh food vacuole is formed this is the process by which heterotrophic nutrition happens let us take another example paramecium paramecium which is also a unicellular organism has a definite shape and food is taken in at a specific spot food is moved to this spot by the movement of cilia which covers the entire surface of the cell if you take a look at this 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 small structure which you can see across this is called as cilia the food is pushed across this particular uh, by the cilia and food is taken inside let's take a look at nutrition in human beings how does nutrition takes place in human beings nutrition in human beings takes place in the digestive system the main organs of the digestive system are mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine and anus the main glands which help in human uh, digestion and nutrition process are salivary glands gastric glands liver pancreas and intestinal glands so the nutrition process begins here in the mouth the buccal cavity and completely ends up in the anus so we'll study each organ one by one when a person eats food it is first processed in mouth this is also achieved by crushing the food with our teeth the food is also wetted using saliva to make its passage smooth the saliva is secreted by the salivary glands the food we consume is broken down using enzymes secreted in our body the saliva contains an enzyme called salivary amylase that breaks down starch to give sugar students as you know when we take food inside our mouth we chew it and saliva is mixed with this food and there is an enzyme called salivary amylase that breaks down this food into starch to give sugar 
the food has to move in a rhythmical manner to get digested properly the lining of the canal has muscles that contract rhythmically in order to push the food forward this movement is known as peristalsis in esophagus if you can see in this first picture this is food here and you can see the muscles here have contracted and as the food moves down the muscles continue to contract and uh, finally it keeps on moving down and you can see the muscles which which are contracted here here you can see they are relaxed then this movement is called as peristalsis peristalsis is a radically symmetrical contraction and relaxation of muscles that propagates in a wave down a tube so now the food from the mouth travels to the stomach to the food pipe or esophagus the stomach is a large organ which expands when food enters it the muscular wall of the stomach helps in mixing the food thoroughly with more digestive juices gastric glands present in the wall of the stomach helps in digestion so the food which mo which moves from the mouth down the esophagus and it comes to the stomach and in stomach the process of digestion continues there you can see what happens hydrochloric acid pepsin and mucus are released in the stomach hydrochloric acid creates an acidic medium which facilitates the action of the enzyme pepsin so hydrochloric acid pepsin and mucus they are released into the stomach which further helps in breaking down the food particles the inner lining of the stomach is protected by the mucus from the action of hydrochloric acid under normal conditions the sphincter muscles release the food in small amounts in regulated manner into the small intestine small intestine is the longest part of the alimentary canal which is fitted into a compact space because of the extensive filing you can look at this picture the small intestine in fact is the longest part of the alimentary canal and you can see how twisted it is the food from the stomach moves slowly into the small intestine for further breaking up carnivorous animals have a shorter small intestine as it is easier to digest the meat whereas herbivorous animals have a longer intestine to allow the cellulose to be digested carbohydrates proteins and fats get completely digested in the small intestine let's for look at further further the small intestine receives bile secreted from the liver and pancreas secrete pancreatic juice which contains trypsin for digesting proteins and lipase for breaking down emulsified fats so we can see that it's a continuous process where the food we take from the mouth is slowly breaking down into proteins lipase and emulsified fats The food coming from the stomach is acidic and has to be made alkaline for the pancreatic enzymes to act on it. Bile juice helps in making food alkaline and also acts on fats. The wall of the small intestine contains glands which secrete intestinal juice. The enzymes present in it finally convert the proteins to amino acid. The inner lining of the small intestine has numerous finger-like projections called villi which increase the surface area for absorption. The villi as you know they are richly supplied with blood vessels which take the absorbed food to each and every cell of the body. The unabsorbed food is sent into the large intestine where more villi absorb water from this material. the rest of the material is removed from the body via the anus the exit of this waste material is regulated by the anal sphincter so students we saw how the food material breaks down starting from the mouth and finally the waste materials are removed through the anus keep watching thank you